Welcome back to TPS. They say you win as a team and you lose as a team. That is especially true in the NFL. One man could not take all the credit nor the blame when you're talking about playing a game with a 53-man roster. But sometimes it takes just that one giant gaffe from one player to derail a team's Super Bowl aspirations. Here are 10 instances where an individual mistake cost these teams a shot at a Super Bowl run. At TPS, we post videos every single day, so don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe. Then click the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. And a huge shout out to Paul Sheckman for suggesting this video list. If you have an idea for a list, leave it down in the comments section and you never know, we might get to it, we might use it, and we'll write a video and we'll let you know through a shout out that it was your idea, because that's what we do here. Number 10, Doug Bryan misses two game winning field goals. The New York Jets visited rookie Ben Roethlisberger and the top seeded Pittsburgh Steelers in the 2004 AFC Divisional Round. Bill Cowher's squad had only lost once in the regular season, and the Jets weren't supposed to have a chance in this one. But the defense kept Roethlisberger and company in check, and the game was tied 17 apiece late in the fourth quarter. Usually reliable kicker Doug Bryan lined up for a 47-yarder that could have put the Jets up by three at the two-minute warning. Good position. Is it long enough? On the next play, however, Roethlisberger was picked off by David Barrett. The Jets then marched down into Pittsburgh territory while killing the clock. Brian had another chance at redemption, this time a more routine 41-yarder. He missed it! This contest went to overtime, and Steelers kicker Jeff Reed booted the game-winning field goal from 33 yards out to send his team to the AFC Championship. The Jets didn't bring back Brian for the 2005 season. I don't think I need to explain why. Number 9. Lee Evans dropped game-winning TD The New England Patriots hosted the Baltimore Ravens in the 2011 AFC Championship game. It's weird saying this about the Patriots, especially in a home game, but they did not have much business winning this one. Joe Flacco outplayed Tom Brady. The Ravens won the turnover battle 3-1. Rob Gronkowski suffered an ankle injury in the third quarter and was not effective after that. The Ravens had also crushed the Patriots in the wild card round two years earlier. But the Patriots' defense kept Flacco and company in check, and Bill Belichick's team held a 23-20 lead in the fourth quarter. The Ravens' defense forced a punt with less than two minutes to go. Flacco drove downfield and led Baltimore to the red zone. Facing a 2-1 situation, he rifled the apparent game-winning touchdown to Lee Evans, but the veteran wide receiver couldn't hang on. And I'll go for the touchdown if he can. Oh Lee Evans grabs it. Yeah, but stop. it's not oh. the kid he dreamed of when he was 8, 9, 10 years old. You had to play. Ravens fans unfortunately know what happened next. Kicker Billy Cundiff brutally shanked a 32-yard field goal that would have forced overtime, and the Patriots went on to win Super Bowl 46. Kind of took most of the blame for this loss, but I mean, all Evans had to do was simply hold on to the ball, and the Ravens don't even have to attempt that game-tying field goal. Number 8. Gary Anderson's Imperfect Miss No NFL team has gone through more heartbreaking losses in the past 25 or so years than the Minnesota Vikings, but it's safe to say that the 1998 NFC Championship game stands out as the most gut-wrenching in their history. Led by dual-threat running back Randall Cunningham and two future Hall of Fame wideouts in Chris Carter and Randy Moss, the 98 Vikings ran the most dominant offensive machine ever seen at the time. They set the single-season record for points scored with 556 while posting a 15-1 record. After cruising past the San Francisco 49ers in the divisional round, many played host to the Atlanta Falcons in the conference championship game. Minnesota led 27-20 with just over two minutes remaining. Kicker Gary Anderson, who hadn't missed a single field goal or extra point opportunity all year long, came out for a 38-yard attempt that would have sealed the game. Probably, yes, 39 yards away, and it's not good. Anderson's miss gave Atlanta new life, and they drove down the field for the game-tying score to force overtime. The Falcons' defense held its ground in the extra game, allowing kicker Morton Anderson the opportunity to play hero. Is good. He knows it. They know it. Out of all days to miss a field goal opportunity, Anderson had to miss the one that would have sent many to the Super Bowl. Something tells us he wouldn't have missed that if he wasn't playing in Minnesota. It's just a Vikings thing. Number seven, Marcus Williams allows a Minneapolis miracle. 
The New Orleans Saints trailed the Minnesota Vikings 17-0 during the 2017 NFC Divisional Round, but Drew Brees and Sean Payton made the necessary adjustments and reeled off 14 unanswered points to cut the deficit to three. Alvin Kamara's late touchdown put the Saints up by one with three minutes to go. Kai Forbath and Will Lutz exchanged late field goals and New Orleans held a 24-23 lead with only 25 seconds remaining. Case Keenum faced a third and 10 situation from his own 39 with only 10 seconds remaining. The snake-bitten Vikings needed a miracle and thanks to the ultimate rookie mistake by Marcus Williams, they got it. Keenum steps into it, passes, Williams just had to tackle Stephon Diggs inbounds to end the game, but he wound up ducking underneath Diggs instead. With that, the Saints missed out on the chance to reach their first NFC Championship game in eight years. Number 6. Brett Favre's Ill-Advised Interception Brett Favre's first season with the Minnesota Vikings was more stressful than anyone expected. He guided them to 12 wins in a trip to the 2009 NFC Championship game where they visited the New Orleans Saints. The game was tied 28 apiece with 19 seconds remaining. Favre already had kicker Ryan Longwell in field goal range, but he was looking to get closer on 3rd and 15. But Favre committed the ultimate no-no of throwing across his body to a wide-open Tracy Porter for an interception. Favre sprints to his right, throws back across the middle, and he's intercepted! Porter! The return! So much for attempting a game-winning field goal. Rather, the Saints won the coin toss in overtime, and Breeze did his magic to help Garrett Hartley play hero. New Orleans went on to win the Super Bowl while Favre could only look on, realizing that he blew his final chance to capture that elusive second Super Bowl ring. Number 5. Brandon Bostick's Boshed Onside Kick Recovery The 2014 FC Championship game between the Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks was a sloppy affair for Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson. They combined for six interceptions, six sacks, and only 387 passing yards. The difference? Turnovers. Wilson had four interceptions in the game, Rodgers had two. The Packers held a 19-7 late in the fourth quarter, when Wilson finally snapped out of his funk and scored on a one-yard run, cutting Green Bay's lead down to five just before the two-minute warning. Now the Seahawks needed an onside kick recovery to have a chance. The Packers' tight end Brandon Bostick was out there to recover the onside kick, and he initially got possession of the football, but he wound up fumbling it. and the Packers' Super Bowl chances away. Because the onside kick hits the ground, you can't ask for the fair catch. You got to feel... Marshawn Lynch scored the go-ahead 24-yard touchdown with 1 minute 25 seconds left. Seattle converted on the two-point conversion, but Mason Crosby made a 48-yard field goal to force overtime. Seattle got the ball first in overtime, however, and the comeback was completed on this unforgettable play. Wilson toward the end zone. It is caught. Seattle's going to the. And with that, the Packers had blown an easy trip to the Super Bowl. Bostic couldn't hang on to the ball, and Green Bay didn't recover after that. Number four, Marlon McCree fumbles game ceiling interception. The 2006 San Diego Chargers had the number one scoring offense in the NFL, averaging 30.8 points per game. And they also had a stingy defense that allowed just 18.9 points per game and they finished with an NFL best 14-2 record. This was Phillip Rivers' first full season as the Chargers starter, and of course he had MVP running back LaDainian Tomlinson and future Hall of Famer tight end Antonio Gates in his prime. The Chargers drew the Patriots in the AFC Divisional Round, and for three and a half quarters it looked like it would be their lucky day. The Patriots struggled to get it going on offense, with Tom Brady throwing two interceptions. Even Bill Belichick had no answer for LT, who posted 123 rushing yards, two touchdowns, and 64 receiving yards on just two catches. The Chargers led 21-13 in the waning minutes, needing just one big play to bury the Patriots. And they got it when Marlon McCree picked off Brady on 4th and 5. But this is the Chargers we're talking about, so you know what happened next. Gottheimer's hoping. You know, we've seen oh, Troy Brown. It, it is a catch and then a fumble. We've seen Troy after throwing his third interception, Brady magically got another chance to make up for it, thanks to McCree's fumble immediately after the pick. 
Sure enough, the Patriots reached the end zone and got the two-point conversion to tie it up. Steven Goskowski later booted the go-ahead with a minute left. Chargers kicker Nate Kading missed a game-tying 54-yarder as time expired, and the dream season in San Diego ended with a thud, thanks in large part to McCree's costly fumble. Number 3. Roger Craig's Fumble Ends 3 Pete Bid The 49ers were looking to pull off the first-ever Super Bowl 3 Pete. They just had to get past Bill Parcells and the stingy New York Giants in the 1990 NFC Championship game to return to the big dance. This game was a classic defensive slugfest, with the 49ers holding on to a 13-12 lead in the waning minutes. Joe Montana had been knocked out of the game after taking a vicious hit from Leonard Marshall. But backup Steve Young and running back Roger Craig were able to kill precious time off the clock. One more first down would have iced the game. Before the two-minute warning, Young handed the ball off to his Pro Bowl running back. But Lawrence Taylor was there to do his thing. That gave the Giants new life and quarterback Jeff Hostetler pieced together the drive of his life, giving kicker Matt Barr a chance to play hero, and he delivered. Player. And the kick is good! The Giants went on to beat the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl, while Craig and the 49ers went home absolutely stunned. Number 2 D. Ford's costly offside penalty. 2018 AFC Championship game, Arrowhead Stadium, Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady duked it out on one of the greatest quarterback postseason duels ever. Kansas City trailed 14-0 at halftime, but then the offense caught fire in the second half. The two sides exchanged blow for blow. Damian Williams put the Chiefs ahead 28-24 just before the two-minute warning. Now, Kansas City's defense needed just one more play to send the team to the Super Bowl, but this would be no easy task with TB12 on the other side. Facing a 3rd and 10 situation, Brady threw a high pass to Rob Gronkowski, who wasn't able to make the catch. It bounced off of his hands and right to Shavarius Ward for the game chilling interception. But hold your horses, there was a flag on the play. Hands in the pocket. Flags out, balls picked. Balls in there. And he is, he's over the blue by quite a bit, actually. D. Ford was offside by a few inches. Otherwise, the Chiefs take over and burn the clock to win the game. The Patriots took advantage of the second chance and scored the go-ahead touchdown. The Chiefs were still able to send the game to overtime, but the Patriots got the ball first in the extra frame, and they made sure Mahomes didn't see the field again. Driving the length of the field before Rex Burkhead sealed it with a touchdown. Two weeks later, the Pats beat the Rams for their sixth Super Bowl title. As for the Chiefs, they had to live with D. Ford's mistake before finally exercising their demons and winning their first Super Bowl one year later. And number one, Ernest Viner and the fumble. There are plenty of career-defining, heartbreaking, history-changing fumbles in the NFL lore. But there's only one such instance that is referred to as THE fumble. One year after losing to John Elway's Denver Broncos at home in the 1986 AFC Championship game, the Cleveland Browns got their shot at revenge. This time, they visited Elway's Broncos in the 1987 AFC title game. The Browns trail 38-31 with just over a minute remaining, but they had the ball at the Denver 8. Quarterback Bernie Kosar handed the ball off to running back Ernest Viner, who got right near the goal line before committing this historic gaffe. Draw to Viner. Ernest Viner. Fumble. Fumble the ball, and Denver has recovered. In typical Browns fashion, Viner fumbled just as he was getting close to the end zone. The Broncos gained possession, melted the clock, took a safety, and won 38 33 to get back to the Super Bowl. On the bright side, Biner did manage to win a Super Bowl with the Washington Redskins in the 1991 season, so at least he redeemed himself. Unfortunately for the Browns, however, they couldn't say the same. What other individual mistakes ended a promising Super Bowl run? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, now's a great time to do that. Hit that subscribe button. If you liked the video, then like the video. We'd really appreciate it. And until next time, tune into TBS. And until next time, tune into TPS. Every single day, I'm getting it out for more cool videos. We will see you.